Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for our end of year monitor buying guide. Last time we provided an update on the best gaming monitors was back in May. And since then we've tested plenty of new and interesting products that are worth including. Several of our favorites have also dropped in price, which is nice to see. And we're expecting more discounts throughout the holiday shopping period. As with our previous best of videos, we tend to talk about and recommend monitors we've previously tested and know to be good, or monitors that are very similar to products we have tested. It's always worth going back and checking out the dedicated monitor reviews we produce for more in-depth thoughts on each product, but just so you know, these recommendations are not sponsored in any way by any company, they're based on our testing and reviews. Most of our reviews these days are sitting over on our dedicated Monitors Unbox channel, so be sure to head over there and subscribe so you don't miss the full suite of our monitor coverage. Also, the goal of this video is to go through five different monitor categories covering 1080p, 1440p, 4K, ultrawide, and HDR gaming monitors with several recommendations in each category. But if you're interested in a specific category of display, I'd highly recommend checking out the dedicated best of videos we've produced for that category, which go into more detail with more options. This video is built around US pricing for those in North America, but there will be a dedicated European edition of this video focusing on the Europe market over on Monitors Unboxed in a few days. So if you live across the Atlantic, that will be the video for you. Finally, a note on pricing. While pricing was accurate when we made this video, prices do change pretty often, so it's always worth checking out the links in the description which will provide up-to-date pricing information. Anyway, let's kick this one off, but before we do, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI's new range of GeForce RTX 40 series gaming slim graphics cards, designed to deliver exceptionally fast performance for gamers and creators, but without the big bulky coolers that we've become accustomed to. The thinner and lighter design allows for hassle-free installation and better compatibility. All models are available in either black or white designs and take advantage of the latest Trifroza 3 cooler with Torx 5.0 fans, a nickel plated copper base plate with up to eight heat pipes. Then thanks to Nvidia's Ada Lovelace architecture, you get AI powered DLSS 3 and class leading ray tracing support along with competitive features such as Reflex. So to learn more about the all new MSI GeForce RTX 40 series gaming slim graphics cards, please click the links in the video description. There are so many options in the 1440p monitor market right now that picking out the best ones is pretty difficult, especially as they can be quite similar. My thoughts in this category haven't changed too much from my recent best 1440p monitors video over on Monitors Unboxed, but here's a summary of some of those thoughts from that video, and if you want to learn more, check out the dedicated guide on Monitors Unboxed. If you're after an excellent bang for buck 1440p gaming monitor with a refresh rate around the 144 to 180Hz range, I don't see much point spending more than $280 US right now. There's plenty of quality below that price point. My pick of the bunch is either the MSI G274 QPF-QD at $260, or the Gigabyte M27QP at $270. Both are very similar and will give you a great gaming experience. Both monitors are 27 inch 1440p 170Hz IPS LCDs, and while they use different panels, overall performance is quite similar. The MSI option is a little better tuned for motion performance, but for many buyers, the difference will be very hard to distinguish. The Gigabyte model has a more accurate sRGB mode and includes a KVM switch, while the MSI model has a wider color gamut. Both are nicely balanced across the most important areas to monitor performance, and given they occupy a similar price range right now, $260 to $270 US, it's a toss up for me. Also around this price range, I've recommended several LG monitors in the past, including the LG 27GP83B, and I still think they are good buys provided you can get them for a similar price to the Gigabyte and MSI options. The 27GP83B is exactly $280 right now, but it often fluctuates back up to $400 where it simply isn't good value. Monitors like the 27GP83B and its very similar LG Brothers offer slightly better response time performance but a weaker contrast ratio. For high refresh rate shoppers, after a 1440p 240Hz monitor, it's hard to go past the MSI G274QPX at $330 US. That is an outstanding price, and it's even cheaper now than when I reviewed it at $380. It's a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz IPS LCD with performance pretty similar to previous budget monitors with these specs, such as the now more expensive Gigabyte M27QX. 
high brightness, very good contrast ratio, flat panel with great viewing angles, decent sRGB mode, the only typical to average response times. There's no major deal breaker flaws and I think it's hard to go past at such a low price. I also think the LG 27GR83Q is pretty good, and a better monitor than the G274QPX due to its better response time tuning and calibration, but in the US it's priced more around $500. It's a good product, but it's not worth the $170 premium over the MSI, and it's similar with the M27QX these days. At $400, it's too similar in performance to the cheaper MSI to get my recommendation. If you're after the overall best 1440p gaming monitor, that is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM, which is a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED display. This is a truly excellent product in a lot of ways, delivering motion clarity that destroys most LCD monitors and gets very close to 360Hz offerings. Even if you weren't that interested in HDR gaming, the PG27 AQDM is a great product for competitive multiplayer games due to its speed and high refresh rate, and it gets even better if you play a variety of games that include both multiplayer and single player. That's down to the excellent HDR capabilities of this OLED, deep zero-level blacks, per-pixel local dimming, and good levels of brightness lead to a stunning HDR experience while gaming. There are a few downsides here, such as the weak text clarity and risk of permanent burn-in, so it's not a great display for productivity, but for 1440p gaming, there are few products as good as this one. If you don't want to spend $1,000 US, fair enough, that's a lot to spend, then the AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD might tempt you. It uses the same OLED panel, doesn't get as bright, and it will only set you back $800. Also worth considering for the ultimate motion clarity at 1440p is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQN, which provides a 1440p 360Hz IPS LCD panel. This display slightly edges out the OLED in motion while also delivering better input latency due to its higher refresh rate, and the option of clarity enhancing backlight strobing through ULMB2. It's a well calibrated, great looking display, and while it is very expensive for what it offers, the price has recently come down to $900, a $150 saving compared to its MSRP. Definitely worth assessing, though for most people, I'd probably go with the PG27 AQDM instead. If you're after a 4K high refresh rate gaming monitor right now, pricing and the quality of options is the best that it has ever been. It was only a few years ago that $500 US would have gotten you just a 1440p 144Hz monitor. These days, at the same price, you are getting 4K instead. For those after a 27-inch 4K monitor, there are three or four standout picks right now that are worth considering. The Gigabyte M27U, the MSI MAG281URF, and the Gigabyte M28U. All of these monitors can regularly be found for around $450 to $500 US, which right now is the sweet spot for these specifications, and given how close these products are in performance, it's hard to split them. It may simply come down to pricing in your region and what is available. The M27U is a 27-inch 4K 160Hz IPS LCD, and it offers an excellent balance across all areas to performance, from response time speed to color quality. Motion performance is similar to that of other modern IPS LCDs, and the panel is decently well optimized for variable refresh rate gamers. No glaring flaws here. We're looking at a wide gamut experience, great brightness, reasonable factory calibration, and of course, the excellent resolution of a 4K panel that's well suited to productivity work as well as gaming. There are no areas to performance that especially stand out, but no deal breaker flaws either. Pretty close in performance to the Gigabyte M27U is the Gigabyte M28U and MSI MAG281URF, both of which use a different panel to the M27U but are products I've recommended in the past due to their excellent value. These two alternatives are a little better tuned for high refresh rate gaming and have higher contrast ratios, but the M27U is much brighter and a little better tuned for variable refresh gaming. It really depends on what you're after as to which is the best choice, and given all are below $500 these days, I think it's hard to go wrong. In some regions, it could also be worth considering the LG 27GR93U, which can be a similar price to these Gigabyte and MSI models, but in the US it's far too expensive to recommend right now. At 32 inches, I'd be recommending the LG 32GR93U at $800, the Lenovo Legion Y32P30 at $700, or the Gigabyte M32U at $650. The most expensive of this bunch, the 32GR93U, is the best performer, offering the most optimized motion performance and best feature set. The Lenovo is a great mid-range offering that still provides a decent balance between speed and visuals, 
while the Gigabyte M32U is also a great bang for buck choice. I elaborate a bit more on these products in our recent Best 4K Monitors video on Monitors Unboxed. If you're after a high-end 4K gaming monitor for HDR gaming and elite speed, at this point I would strongly recommend waiting for OLED options that are set to debut in the first half of 2024. Even if you aren't set on an OLED and are currently considering LCD options like the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, I think we're close enough now to 2024 where it just makes sense to wait and see how those products perform and where they are priced. If they end up being super competitive, that will see the current 4K HDR offerings of today drop in price, which is only a good thing. What we do know is that in 2024 we will be getting new 4K 240Hz OLED monitors, starting with 32-inch QD OLED options that have been announced from ASUS, MSI and Dell. There are also plans for 32-inch W OLED and 27-inch 4K 240Hz using both QD OLED and W OLED, so it won't be too long until there is a wide range of options here. I expect most of these products to be relatively expensive, but that's also the case today with LCD options offering true HDR. So we'll probably learn more at CES 2024 in January, which is just a few months away and I think it's worth waiting for. When buying an HDR monitor in 2023, the usual caveats apply when researching the range of HDR options out there. Be very careful about products that advertise HDR without actually offering any real HDR capabilities. These monitors, often advertised as Display HDR 400, simply aren't worth buying or considering in any way. But if you do want a true HDR product, luckily these days there are some great products on the market, and yes, while they are quite expensive, the experience on offer is excellent. To determine which HDR monitor is best for you, I recommend first deciding between a regular 16x9 format or an ultrawide, and then considering things like screen resolution and display technology. For those after a 16x9 monitor, the best of these, in my opinion, is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM. As I talked about earlier, this is a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED with excellent motion clarity and elite HDR performance. It's a highly versatile product that's well suited to both competitive multiplayer gaming and visually stunning single player experiences thanks to its strong combination of features and performance. It's bright, especially for a W OLED panel, vibrant, fast and responsive. Really hard to go wrong here, although the drawbacks for OLED like burn-in and sub-pixel layout hurt this monitor's usability for desktop work. I also previously mentioned the AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD, which is a great lower cost option offering not quite the same level of performance as the PG27 AQDM, but the same OLED panel. If you want something larger or higher resolution for 16x9 HDR gaming, like I said in the 4K section at this point, I would strongly recommend waiting until 4K OLED monitors are released in the first half of 2024. There are some good products I've recommended before, like the Odyssey Neo G7 and LG C3, but with a new range of capabilities set to be available in the next 6 months or so, including 32-inch 4K 240Hz OLED, I think it just makes sense to see what they offer in terms of price and performance before making an expensive monitor purchase. I'd hate to drop $1,000 on a monitor right now, only to have it superseded within months. If you want to go down the ultra-wide path and feel that format is right for you, you've certainly made a great call, as in my opinion the QD OLED ultra-wides are some of the best HDR gaming screens available today. I also personally like the 21x9 format and its better immersion than standard 16x9 monitors, but it's not for everyone. If it does sound like something you're after, well, let's get talking about the best ultra-wide monitors because the top choices there are also what I'd pick for ultra-wide HDR, so let's get into it. The best ultra-wide category is another that features quite a stark split between the top and bottom ends of the market. In my opinion, if you're after an ultra-wide, you should either spend big and grab a QD OLED for over $800 US, or go something budget and spend more like $400 US. Anything between these prices typically isn't worth buying as it either offers only a minor upgrade on our value picks or a significant downgrade on the top picks. I also haven't looked into the more budget class ultrawides in quite some time, so in this video this isn't a focus as my recommendation would likely be out of date. For higher end shoppers, it's clear that the ultrawide market is now dominated by QD OLED monitors, and there are many to choose from, all offering a 34 inch 3440x1440 QD OLED panel at up to 175Hz. We have plenty of breakdowns available on monitors unboxed that compare and review the main options, I've tested 5 of them at this point. 
Right now, the standout choice is the Dell Alienware AW3423DWF, which was fixed in the middle of 2023 via a vital firmware update that improved HDR accuracy and brightness. It's also one of the most affordable options on the market, on sale at the moment, at the time of making this video, for just $800 US, down from its normal price of $1000. Given its improved performance and great price, I'd recommend it over the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 at the moment, which would be in second place. The AW3423DWF offers a 34-inch 3440x1440 165Hz QD OLED panel with a 21x9 aspect ratio and 1800R curve. The star of the show here is its excellent HDR capabilities, including zero-level blacks, per-pixel local dimming, and a high 1000 nits of peak brightness, all with decent HDR accuracy, provided you are running the latest firmware. As an OLED though, it's also very fast in terms of response times, offering great motion clarity that's really no different to some of the 175Hz competition at such a minor refresh rate difference that it's basically negligible. I also appreciate the Alienware's decent build quality, use of full-size display inputs, low input lag, and largely inaudible fan. Like many OLED monitors though, I wouldn't recommend it for productivity work, mostly due to the risk of permanent burn-in as well as some minor concerns around text quality. These QD OLED monitors also have poor screen coatings and composition that require optimal placement of lights in your room to reduce reflections, just something to keep in mind. In the 1080p product class, I think it's actually quite a simple story these days. Either you're after an entry-level monitor to get started with PC gaming, and I think 1080p is still a suitable choice if you have less than $200 to spend, or you're more interested in a super high refresh rate option for competitive gaming with features like backlight strobing and fast response times a priority. For those after an entry-level gaming monitor, my recommendation continues to be the AOC 24G 2SP, which has come down in price since my last update to sit at just $140 US. This display offers excellent bang for buck at that price, providing a decent quality 24-inch 1080p 165Hz IPS LCD panel. Occasionally, it's priced too high, more around the $200 mark, but anything below $160 makes sense, and especially at $140, I think it's a great deal. The 24G 2SP is a solid choice, offering great response time performance in its class, solid color quality, and handy features like a height-adjustable stand. The overall package AOC are offering is nicely balanced between gaming performance and image quality, so I'm comfortable continuing to recommend it. The main negatives are simply that it doesn't have class-leading performance in any area, it's not the highest resolution or the highest refresh rate or it's the best performing display, but it's so well balanced that it doesn't really matter, especially for just $140. Some people may question why you'd buy a 1080p monitor in 2022, but the simple answer here is that 1440p monitors aren't that cheap yet. For most gamers, I would recommend getting one of our 1440p choices instead, but if you simply don't have $250 to spend, then going 1080p is your option, and the 24G 2SP offers something great here. If you're after a premium monitor for eSports gaming, there are two options on the market best suited for that task, but be prepared to pay a hefty price. They are the ASUS ROG Swift Pro PG248QP, priced at a whopping $900, as well as the comparatively more affordable BenQ XL 2566K at $600. Both are 24-inch 1080p TN LCD monitors. The ASUS option goes up to 540Hz and the BenQ up to 360Hz, both offering elite-tier backlight strobing support. The main benefit to going the ASUS PG248QP is the higher refresh rate. 540Hz is somewhat visually clearer than 360Hz for competitive gaming. It's also slightly smoother and provides lower input latency. ULMB2 works really well on this monitor to increase clarity through backlight strobing, although it only works at refresh rates above 360Hz and for the best experience it requires an NVIDIA GPU. The ASUS model also has faster response times, but at $900 it's so expensive that I find it hard to recommend to most gamers except for those people with super deep pockets that just want the best and highest refresh rate. The BenQ XL 2566K is a bit more reasonable, though it's still expensive and largely designed for esports pros. At 360Hz it's not quite as fast or clear as the PG248QP, but it does still feature BenQ's excellent DIAC Plus backlight strobing technology, which is more versatile than ULMB2 as it supports lower refresh rates. For example, you can get great strobe clarity as low as 100Hz, plus it works flawlessly with all brands of graphics card. It's still reasonably difficult to recommend to a mainstream buyer, but it has a target market and it nails what that market is looking for. 
As both the ASUS and BenQ options use TN panels though, they are designed exclusively for high performance gaming and not visual quality. They have atrocious viewing angles and are nothing special when it comes to other aspects of image quality like contrast ratio or color gamut. The PG248QP is the better calibrated monitor and even offers a bit of wide gamut, but still, the primary use case here is competitive gaming and seeing your enemies with the greatest possible clarity. And that does it for today's monitor recommendation video. Lots and lots of options to choose from covering most of the categories I hope you are considering at the moment. If you do want to learn more about the monitors we've talked about today, we do have dedicated reviews for most of them that will go into the specifics around performance and features, which are of course well worth watching. I also have longer breakdowns available for the best 1440p, HDR and 4K monitors, though just be aware that some of those recommendations may be less relevant in today's market depending on pricing and other options since we made those videos. Don't forget about Monitors Unboxed, our channel which is the best source of monitor content around at least. We think so and I hope you do too. And of course if you are planning on buying any of these monitors we do encourage you to use the links in the description below, that does help. Anyway. Thanks for watching. That's it for this one. If you do appreciate all the work that goes into monitors on this channel, then please do consider supporting us via our Patreon or Floatplan accounts. That allows us to continue producing independent reviews of those monitors and you'll get some cool benefits in the process like our Discord community, great place to talk about monitors. ICC profiles are included as one of our benefits as well. So lots of great stuff over there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.